The following is a presentation of TFNN. Time to talk about your health. Living a primal lifestyle. Yeah, we have Tom on t from Tampa on the phone. Hey, Tom. Good morning. It's bright and early now, huh? Hey, thanks. Good. Hi, Tom. How you guys doing? Nico? Doing great. Good. Hey, um, your newsletter is outstanding, man. I'm, I'm telling you, man, it is outstanding. And so is the Rhino Edge. I love that stuff. I'd never be without it. I mean, I've been on it now three, four months, man. I mean, it's just I can't get over how good I feel. Primal Edge is, uh, you know, people are raving about it. People who are trying it, they know because you can feel it. We'd not be without it. Call now. Toll free at one 877 Nine two seven six six four eight internationally at seven two seven four four five one zero four four. Now your hosts, Nico Dehan and Paige Clark. Good morning. I'm Nico Dehan, and welcome to Living a Primal Lifestyle, where we explore a return to a more balanced, natural, wild world to recover our natural health and regain our rights and freedoms. And it's a beautiful morning in downtown Clearwater. It's sixty four degrees, going up to about mid eighties today. Clear skies. It's a great time of year down here, that's for sure. Uh, folks, please <clears throat> take time to check out my Health Signals newsletter. I have a brand new one coming out next week. This is where we put all the research that we do for the show. So really important if you want to uh, research some of these things that we talk about for yourself, make up your own mind on these things, this is where you do it. It's only $10 a month. You get two issues on the first and the third Tuesday of every month. Also remind you to pick up some Primal Edge. This is our ancestral comprehensive daily nutrition. It includes over 310 cell-ready liquid ingredients, all powered by humic and fulvic acid to get the good stuff in and the bad stuff out. Phone number here, <coughs> folks, is 877-927-6648. Paige isn't here today, but uh, I'm going to entertain you. And, of course, you can reach her at page at tfnn.com and as well as mine at nico at tfnn.com. If you have any suggestions for the show, just want to make a comment or... Uh, bring up something that you want to talk about on the show. Now, last show, we talked a lot about uh, play, how play is kind of missing out of uh, uh, the children of today. Me being raised in the 1950s, a uh, lot of play going on up there. Play uh, doesn't just make happy kids, the author here says. It doesn't just make them healthy and human. It also makes them smarter. Uh, today's mania for raising young Einsteins, uh, the author observes, might have destroyed the real Einstein. He was a notorious dreamer who earned poor grades in school, but s somewhere in his frolics uh, devoned the formula for the relationship between energy and matter. A play refreshes and stimulates the mind, it seems, and frequent breaks may actually make kids more interested in learning, according to uh, Rhonda Clements, who is a uh, university professor of physical education. The case for play is simple and intuitive, which makes it, uh, which is what makes the decline of play a mystery. If Dick can run wild and get into Princeton too, then why is he out there running his little head off? Well, that makes sense. The play has a real value uh, that that doesn't really surprise most parents. Their kids are usually horsing around in the house, and uh, they did the same thing that. Uh, you know, when they were young. Uh, the puzzle, I think, really is, is where did all the playtime go? We know in schools they cut it back, and th those are regulations. Uh, uh, Willie, uh, Millie Wilcox, 60, thinks she knows. The retired nurse and mother of two grown boys, one of them being this writer, doesn't have a Ph.D. in psych, uh, child psychology. Just the memory of her own childhood, picking elderberries in the alley and uh, once imagined, uh, and uh, playing house inside a cardboard box set smack in dab in the middle of the street. Yeah, I saw that when I was a kid, too. There wasn't much traffic around then, and uh, she said also every neighborhood kind of had a vacant lot. And <clears throat> there's kind of common sense beside her, uh, behind her nost nostalgia. Uh, after all, play needs to happen somewhere. And, you know, we just pick, I mean, if you had an empty lot beside your house, you were blessed, I think. <clears throat> Those things are vanishing, aren't they? Uh, there's practically no more uh, 
there's practically no more uh, empty lots around. Well, in my neighborhood, there is a few. But they also say the, uh, the new free space has really been spoken for. There's hardly any sidewalks in a lot of the modern uh, <coughs> uh, environments these days. People are being paranoid about things. They're paranoid about uh, strangers in the neighborhood, of course. They're paranoid about uh, apple waste. You've got to pick up all the waste products now, now, right now. And it's, uh, you know, the fear of molesters, fear of bacteria, uh, fast cars going through the neighborhood, neighbors who have guns, neighbor who let their children eat sugar. <laughs> There's another one. The list is kind of goes on and on. The reason I bring this up, I got a nice uh, comment from one of our listeners, uh, Alan, and he is talking about, he sent me a nice link to the Waldorf School, and this is Silicon Valley. It says here, technology can wait. And there's a bunch of different schools around like this. Uh, reminds me of the Sudbury type of schools. And uh, it says here, the school's chief teaching tools are anything but high tech. Pens and papers, knitting needles, and occasionally mud. Not a computer can be found, no screens at all. They're not allowed in the classroom. And the school even frowns on their use at home. Uh, schools nationwide are rushing to supply their classroom, classrooms with computers, but many, many policymakers say it is foolish to do uh, otherwise. You know, so the new technology is really the thing that uh, people want in the schools. It kind of makes sense. As, you know, our tech, uh, our economy is driven on technology, and naturally we want our kids to be up to speed. But is it smarter to go the other route, like a Waldorf school, so our edu education can get kind of back to where it was, where we're learning real things. We're not learning off computers. You're learning to read a book, learning how to be quiet, learning how to not use technology for things. I mean, I think it's important. Uh, the author here says, I finally reject the notion that you need technology aids in grammar school. Alan Eagle, 50, whose daughter, Andy, is one of 196 children at the Waldorf Academy. His son, William, is 13, is at the nearby Whittle School middle school, the idea that an app or an iPad can better teach my kids to read and do arithmetic is ridiculous, it seems. Yeah. <clears throat> so this is kind of what we were talking about, is that there was a real decline in uh, the, the imagination of children, because we don't have that play either. And I think, too, it spills over into the adults. Uh, we don't play anymore. Uh, I'm lucky. I go to jujitsu. So if you have some place to go where you can roll around with your buddies, that's a great thing. But there might be some casual things that you can do, like pick up a golf club and go out and play a casual game of golf or do some tennis. You know, sports are a great way to relieve the tension and just get out in the sun sometimes, uh, just to get out in the environment. So anything you do, going for walks, you know, uh, we're preparing for our hike. So, uh, you know, on Sundays now we go for about an hour and a half walk. And we might even continue this tradition because my parents always walked and it's right there in the back of my mind so I think it's important to do that but I think we have lost it and uh, I do want to go over in the next section uh, a, a, a primal play uh, a, a site that has primal play on it so uh, Let's see what other people are doing, too. So the number here, folks, is 877-927-6648. I please ask you to pick up some Primal Edge. If you want to be healthy, this is a great way to go about it. You get over 310 cell ready liquid ingredients, really easy to take. It tastes rather good. And you take it every day, you're going to have a real good life. Stick around, folks. I'll be right back. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, 
Life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Nico and Paige take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Welcome back, folks. Paige is out today, but she'll be back next week. Uh, I'm on this site called uh, Movement is Medicine. Uh, the actual site is called PrimalPlay.com. And I was listening to a podcast by the, this gentleman here. And um, he has a chart here. Okay, impact of physical inactivity in the general population. And, of course, there's just hundreds of things here. Uh, it, uh, it disrupts sleep uh, if you don't have enough uh, activity. So your inactivity can uh, definitely give you insomnia. Also in the second part it talks about stroke. I know this is a little small and I can't really get any larger. But stroke, motor control, insulin resistance, uh, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, blood lipids, inflammation, heart disease, cancer disease, different types of digestion problems, uh, wound healing is a problem. Uh, sexual health, infertility, health of the offspring, libido, rectal dysfunction, mental health is anxiety, depression, uh, chronic stress, self-esteem, quality of life and mood, neurodegeneration, this is the Alzheimer's and Parkinson's and all the things that go along with it, of course obesity, macular, uh, muscular uh, decline and then uh, problems with your skeleton with uh, the bones itself. If exercise came in a uh, pill form, we would be only be too eager to take that keep fit medicine movement is medicine actually even small doses extend longevity and can prevent and treat disease. Movement truly is a poly pill. Now this guy has a side primal move and what he is talking about is getting back into nature uh, and using the normal types of things that we always did as primitive man to uh, as exercise and this is getting up and down off the floor this is climbing stairs really climbing rocks and trees perhaps there's a lot of things you can do uh, you just have to find the areas to do them uh, any kind of movement is exercise in a sense remember our, our last uh, show I was talking about the exercise yard and how we really didn't think about exercise and health because we were always moving we didn't have cars uh, a lot of times during our evolution we may not even been on horses and uh, 
So we were always moving as human beings and fixing uh, our environment and looking for food, and those are the things that keep us healthy. Now, of course, we don't go out and look for food anymore. It's at the grocery store. It's a very simple thing. It takes maybe an hour a week to get your groceries. Uh, if you do it in Europe, you're probably doing a little bit every day, but it doesn't take a lot of time. It's, it used to maybe take us two or three hours to g gather some food or to find something, and maybe we didn't eat at all some days. And uh, we're finding out now that may be w what kept us healthy also, an occasional fast, which was forced upon us. But we didn't lose our mind. We didn't lose a control of ourselves. We actually were more stealthy. We were smarter on an empty stomach than we are today. Today, when we're on an empty stomach, we go crazy. We go nuts. We can't function properly. We have headaches. There's all kinds of problems that we have when we're hungry. And uh, when we're not hungry, everything's kind of, there's nothing to worry about. You know, we can chill out. Except today, we don't chill out, do we? No, we go to work. We go to work eight, ten hours every single day, not just one parent, but both parents, and a lot of times the children too. Uh, if they're not working, they're uh, in school. And if they're in school, they're kind of confined. They're not getting any physical activity, barely the minimum, I would say. And they we're all in with the electronics. One of the things I did recently too, and this is just my second week, so it's no big feat, folks, but I got off of Facebook, didn't uh, change anything on Facebook. I just haven't been there. And I just didn't do any likes. I didn't make any comments. Didn't even look at it. And for two weeks, this is, uh, I thought I'd have problems. In a couple of days, you know, I was always reaching for that iPad or the iPhone and to look at it and uh, stop myself. But now it's kind of, huh, you know. And I really did find out that those little likes that I put on there and people liking my stuff, kind of superficial stuff, it really doesn't mean anything. Uh, uh, the same to the birthdays to, uh, you know, to, uh, half a dozen people a week or something like that. It doesn't really mean anything because you're not really touching them. It's nice to get those things, but it's kind of superficial. And I suggest this is a good move. It was the best thing. I'm just going to delete it. I'm still going to have the message app so I can get messages from people who want to contact me. And I'm going to post the show on there. But well, I won't, won't be on Facebook anymore. A little sad because this is where I see most of the things my kids are doing. But maybe we'll be in touch a little bit better than we have. So that's just something that I did just for my own peace of mind because I fi find myself just going to it automatically. And it's, to me, it's just, just a waste of time. So it's another, it's what I've been doing <laughs> actually in the, in the between time, I started uh, taking up the quarter staff, which is a defensive tool. It's a real uh, non-threatening tool, but it's something that's very effective. And I started uh, watching some things on YouTube about how to spin them and how to use them. And uh, it takes a lot of practice, of course. So uh, instead of looking at Facebook, I'm spinning my uh, quarter staff. Got a four foot one. I just got a brand new one and a five, uh, six foot one. Uh, and a five foot one, I should say. So I've got a couple different ones, and I'm going to try to get a shorter one too, so the spins are a little faster. But, uh, you know, just taking up a little hobby is good for the soul. Something that's not electronic, something that has, you know, your hands on wood. It's a good feeling, and it's something that can help protect yourself. It, help, it helps with your coordination. Actually, it helps with my jujitsu too, because my grips are better, and also a little bit more flexibility in my shoulders and things from doing those things. So, you know, there's always something you can do to pick up to learn. Here I am in 74 and learning something new every day, I hope. This is a good thing for me, I think. So, uh, you know, try to find some things that you can do that's also exercise. Going for that walk, uh, making a little game out of it, uh, have a little ball at your feet, go around the neighborhood and kick a ball. I've seen people, there's a guy that comes around every now and then with a little, with a little soccer ball on the trail. He's always got that soccer ball with him. So, you know, there's things you can use to make it fun. And, uh, you know, when I was walking as a kid, I remember just tossing rocks or kicking something. And, you know, that's, that's the play that we were talking about earlier. So exercises can, can come in many forms. The thing I think the author here uh, is saying, uh, in a sense, is that we take things so darn seriously. Like uh, when Paige and I were mentioning the other day that you know everybody has to have a certain uniform for a certain exercise. You know, it's it's not freedom anymore. It's, we're trapped into these things from commercials that are telling us, well, to look cool doing this, you better you know you better have these things. 
And tools are great, but the clothing isn't that important, except you want the clothing to be loose and you want it to not to make you too hot or too cold. So that's really important. Um, he says, every single system in the body relies on us moving. Mental health and cognitive function, muscles, joints, hearts and lungs, hormones and mood, digestive health and gut microbiome, met, uh, metabolism, uh, excuse me, blood pressure, you name it. It needs to move frequently and purposely to be healthy. You can review some of these exercises, and he has a bunch of different exercises. There's... Um, few different articles in here, television viewing and the risk of type 2 diabetes and cardi cardiovascular disease. Uh, another one, fitness versus physical activity patterns in predicting mortality in men. Leisure time spent sitting in relationship to total mortality in a uh, co-host of U cohort of U.S. adults, physical activity recommendations and decrease of mortality. These are all papers that this uh, what I was talking about was taken from. So uh, this will be in one of the future uh, newsletters and I'll include all these links in here so you can kind of do your own research to see how impactful research uh, uh, or uh, exercise can be. I'll be right back. to tell you about the personal training studio that Nico is the owner and president of, Performance Training. Since 1998, Nico has trained individuals and groups to improve their health both mentally and physically. As a certified personal trainer, Nico's main focus is on demonstrating exercises correctly to avoid injury and teaching his clients how to manage their past injuries while getting the most out of their personal training sessions. The Performance Training Studio is filled with unique training equipment that enhances balanced results at a faster rate while minimizing damage and discomfort. For more information, you can give Nico a call at 727-418 8740 or email him at nico at tfnn.com let him know you heard him on tfnn and save up to 100 dollars on a special package just for tfnn listeners act today Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, I want to switch topics here and talk about some sunspots. Uh, here's an article on uh, 
This is Dr. Uh, Tony Phillips on the site called uh, spaceweather.com. And spaceweather.com is run by NASA. And uh, it shows that uh, sunspots are vanishing. They're becoming very scarce. Uh, so far in 2018, the sun has been blank almost 60% of the time with whole weeks going by without sunspots. Today's sun, shown here in an image from NASA Solar Dynamic Observatory, uh, is typical of a featureless solar disk. The fact that sunspots are vanishes comes as no surprise. Uh, forecasters have been saying for years that this would happen as the current solar cycle, which is solar cycle 24, comes to an end. The surprise is how fast. Solar cycle 24 is declining more quickly than forecast that announces the uh, NOAA Space Weather Prediction Center on April 26th of this year. The uh, plot shows observed sunspot numbers in blue versus the official forecast in red. Here it is right here. So we look at this. This is the current cycle. The Twin Peaks is usually happens before it's grand solar minimum. So we're actually down here right now and the forecast, this is the red line which is the forecast, so they were forecasting a lot more than it is. We haven't really reached the bottom yet, but of course the next cycle which is 25 is a minimum. So this is a maximum. This was a minimum before solar cycle 23. Solar cycle 22 was way up here. So 23 was declining. 24 has declined as a maximum it's really declined so now we're going to go into the next solar cycle in the next few years official forecast for solar cycle comes from NOAA social uh, cycle prediction panel, a group of experts from NOAA, NASA, and the U.S. Air Force, universities, and other research organizations. They have been uh, conventing at intervals, uh, convening at intervals since 1989 to predict the timing and intensities of the solar max. The problem is no one really knows how to predict the solar cycle. The most recent iteration of the panel for in 2006-2008 compared 56 different methods ranging from empirical uh, extrapolations of historical data to cutting edge supercomputer models of the sun's magnetic dynamo. None really describe what is happening now. It's important to note that the so solar minimum is a normal part of the social solar cycle. Sunspots have been disappearing, or nearly so, every 11 years since 1843 when German astronomer Henrik Schwab discovered the periodic nature of solar activity. Sometimes they go away for decades. It's happened during the modern minimum of the 17th century. We've all seen it before, or have we? Now here we have another chart of the 1500s to present day. And you can see the modern minimum, the drop-off is dramatic here. And even really that uh, ice age really extended pretty much into the 1800s too, what they call the, Ma, uh, the Dalton Minimum. And this whole 200 year stretch really is called the Little Ice Age. So here's the modern maximum that we went through in the 1980s, 1990s, and down here right now. Researchers are keeping a wary eye on the sun now because of what is happening the last time sunspots disappeared. The solar minimum of 2008 and 9 was unusually deep. The sun set, uh, set space age records for low sunspots numbers, weak solar wind, and depressed solar irradiance. When the sun finally woke up a few years later, it seemed like it has a solar minimum hangover. The bounce back to solar max of 2015, 2012 to 2015 was the weakest solar maximum of the space age, prompting some to wonder if the solar activity is entering a phase of sustained quiet. The faster than expected decline of sunspot cycles may now support that idea. Of course, we've been talking about this for a while. The sun dims. Even though it dims slightly, we start having different things happening. And one of those things that are happening, folks, is uh, the most important change is maybe the increase in the cosmic rays. It says here, flagging solar wind pressure during the solar minimum allows cosmic rays from deep space to penetrate inner solar, the inner solar system. Right now, space weather balloons and NASA spaceships are measuring an uptick in radiation due to this effect. Cosmic rays may alter the chemistry of the world, uh, Earth's upper atmosphere, triggering lightning and seeding clouds. Now, we've seen a lot of that uh, uh, 
uh, <clears throat> different lightning in the sky, much more intense lightning, increasing storms. This is all due to those cosmic rays getting out in here because cosmic rays, remember, little charged particles, it's electric. So when we get more charged particles in with the lightning that's already there, you get an intensification of the lightning. The clouds seem like they're lower. We have much, much more rain because these cosmic rains cling to the moisture and force more water down. Water really comes in our atmosphere from the sun exposure, the oxygen, hydrogen from the sun, oxygen from the earth. They collide in our atmosphere and that's where the water comes from. Well, of course, we're seeing a lot of volcano activity now, big uh, uptick in the ring of fire, that whole ring around the Pacific Ocean. Uh, the real active regions that we normally find active, like in the, uh, in the Philippines area, uh, in uh, South America, along the big ridge there. Of course, we've got more activity in California, Oregon, along the ridge. So a lot of things are happening. Air travelers are affected too. It is well known that cosmic rays penetrate airplanes. Para uh, pa passengers on long commercial flights receive doses similar to dental x-rays during a single trip, while pilots have been classified as occupational radiation workers by the International Commission on Radiology Protection. Ongoing measurements by spaceweather.com and the Earth to Sky calculus show that dose rates at cruising altitudes of 35,000 feet are currently 40 times greater than on the ground values, which could increase as the solar cycle wanes. We've been seeing readings as high as 17. Uh, normal reading is about three or four. Uh, they say extreme is around eight or nine. And now we're seeing con continuously 12, 13, 11 in some cases where it's getting a little bit low. Once in a while we have a break where it is four or five. We had that the other day, but this morning it was back up to 12 again. So we're getting a lot of cosmic rays and this is a, a, a good reason to do a little bit cover up. You know, we talk about we want to get in the sun, but when it's midday here in Florida, you want to cover up, you want to wear the hat, you want to wear some long sleeves as possible or just uh, refrain from overexposure. 20 minutes is plenty. When you go to the beach, you're, I don't encourage you using sunscreen, but covering up is just as good. And now we have a lot of nice clothing out there that has it built right in, so why not? And I don't see any uh, reports about this stuff rubbing off on your skin or anything like that. That may come later, I don't know. But so the uh, solar minimum is just getting started, so you've got to stay tuned for updates. And uh, what I recommend people doing is listen to people like David Devine on, uh, <coughs> um, on the YouTube. And uh, he has uh, a great site there. Of course, we uh, talked to suspicious suspiciousobserver.com and he has spaceweathernews.com which you can go to. Uh, we have the Grand Solar Minimum, uh, dot com. So a lot of people you can look at, they're all in our newsletter usually. So take a look at them, try to make up your own mind and I say prepare. We'll be right back. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. 
No matter what kind of trader you are, 2018 is a great time to try out a subscription to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. Whether you just plan on diversifying your portfolio with some exposure to gold and gold mining equities, or you're a gold bull that sees 2018 as the year of commodities, now is a great time to sign up for the Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his Gold Report every Monday morning before the market opens and covers a variety of topics including gold, silver, platinum, copper, the X. SAU and HUI, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as more than 20 of the most actively traded mining equities. Start your 2018 off with a bang and sign up for The Gold Report today. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. For all the details and to start your subscription right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find The Gold Report under Investment Newsletters. Are you an options trader that's looking for that extra edge when placing trades? David White will be hosting a webinar on May 16th, which is the Wednesday leading up to Options Expiration Friday in May, where he'll discuss in depth the methodology he uses for trading options near expiration, including swing trading setups and expiration day trading scenarios. Subscribers to each of Dave's newsletters, Path of Least Resistance and The Technology Insider, gain access to this 60 minute webinar, which will be archived if you cannot attend live. Dave has had some great Great option trades recently for his subscribers. See for yourself the trading methodology he uses when trading options by signing up today for either of his newsletters and we'll see you Wednesday, May 16th at 5 p.m. for option trading near expiration, analyzing swing trades and expiration day scenarios. For all the details and to sign up today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back to the show, folks. You know, I've been uh, watching the Weather Channel the uh, last few days. It's pretty interesting because uh, during this cold weather, they've been talking about the cold and kind of downplaying it a little bit and say, yeah, there's a couple of records here and expect the cold. But now that the warmth is coming back in, you're saying, boy, record heat coming in and that big red blob is coming in, really emphasizing that it's hot, folks. It's get used to it. It's coming, you know. So they're really overplaying the hot, really downplaying uh, the cold. This is the kind of sense that I get from them. Nowhere on the Weather Channel do they talk about a grand solar minimum. They don't even talk about the 11 year cycle that I've seen. Uh, they may have put it in there when I wasn't looking, but I haven't seen it at all. But here's an article here in Illinois, likely the coldest April since 1895, farmers delay the planting. Temperatures going down, greenhouses going up. Crop losses continue globally. We must all be prepared for the times ahead. According to Mike Tanney of uh, Thunderstorm Weather, there's a strong correlation between historically cold April months and below trend yields. On Monday, Tanara told AgriTalk after the bell host Chip Foley that April 2018 will go down as one of the first three coldest Aprils since uh, 1895. So here's what uh, the warning is. He says, uh, folks in Ohio are not able to start planting because of the cold. Folks in Nebraska are not able to start planting. Folks in Illinois are not able to start planting. Folks in North Dakota are not able to start planting. And same in South Dakota and the same in Iowa. Uh, none of the farmland in Iowa is ready for planting. And here he has a picture of the soil temperature being below 50 degrees. And here we have some equipment out there. I guess there's a video that will go along with this. I don't know what it says. I can't hear anything, but uh, he's showing the temperatures and then later on probably showing some of that farm equipment. It's showing, trying to keep the place is warm out there. Cricket powder. I guess they use some different kinds of things. Anyway, lots of problems out in the planting season. I know in Alberta they say everything is really cold. Uh, and they also are saying that um, a lot of the livestock here in Montana here, 
brutal when it takes a toll on the livestock. Here's a nice picture of green grass, I'll say that much. Let's see what it says here. Cows grazed at the Blackleaf Rocky Mountain front. This year has been one of the coldest, snowiest winters on record. It has made life miserable for cattle and ranchers. It's a calving year for uh, the record books. With relentless snow and cold, producers stepping up to meet challenges met, uh, many have never seen in decades of raising cattle. It's very brutal, uh, Rose says of the Cascade County MSU. A lot of people lost a lot of calves this year. It started the first week of November in Great Falls, she said. A season of constant barrage of cold weather and snow with a uh, few Chinooks. Chinooks are the uh, saving grace, I think, the little uh, warm things that come from the north, from Alaska. As a result, producers had to stay on top of their herds even closer than normal to maintain their health and energy level. Snow lingers in the Blackfeet Reservation in northern Montana, where an estimated 3,000 to 3,500 cattle have perished in the winter. Here is a picture of what the pasture looks like right now. A lot of hard work that went into calving this year. A lot of ranchers didn't come into town for months, they said. Uh, <clears throat> this lady at the Seven Bar Heart Registered Angus Ranch believes the season beats the 1989 worst winter she remembers in her th 32 years of raising, cat raising cattle. She said her husband still holds uh, still hold 1978 as the winner and the prize, however. I guess that was a cold winter there. 19, uh, 2018 stands out because of the sustained nature of the cold and snow events, how it affected the herd throughout the season beginning before the calves were born. The extreme weather, the calorie needs of the cows increased, required to feed them more. We really dug into what we thought would be a big stock file, uh, pile of hay and straw. At least they're feeding them hay and straw and not corn, right, folks? Beyond the additional feed, it takes continued effort to keep the water open during sub-season temperatures, ensuring that the tractor starts and the plow plowing through drifts just to keep the cattle, uh, to reach the cattle in some days. Despite a temporary reprise of the weather in January, February snow and bitter temperatures hit with a vengeance right in time of the calving. So they really had some really problems here. Uh, I can only imagine. I think it's tough enough farming and raising cattle. It's a great job, but uh, when there's all kinds of snow, it's. Uh, I think things are going to have to change. You're going to have to move a little farther site. I think you found that vid, so maybe uh, when we come back, uh, we can show some of that video in there. There's another article here that I wanted to get to, which is the Rattlesnake Ridge in Washington. There's very interesting something going on there. It's still moving now. Here's a picture of it, too. A section of the Rattlesnake Ridge, about two inches a day, it's been moving. It op has opened a visible crack in the south central Washington landscape. The fissure was first spotted in October in the central Washington state overlooking Interstate 82 and the Yakima River. Since then, a 20-acre chunk of mountainside, roughly 4 million cubic yards of rock, enough to fill 25 uh, football stadiums to the top of the bleachers and eight stories up, began sliding down hills. Geologists can measure its current speed about two and a half inches a day, but they, they cannot say for certain when or if it might accelerate, but they are powerless to stop it. And there's a video on here. Let's see if that shows anything. There it is right there. So you can see some cracking in there and some sliding down. So we wait and see and prepare. The uh, preparation has been key. I think it's going pretty well. So they closed the road there. So things are happening, uh, a lot of earthquakes, of course, up in that area, things are moving. Uh, I know there's a lot of uh, activity in Yellowstone, but I think personally that's probably good. Yellowstone venting means that everything is kind of stabilizing itself, and that's the way it's been. So uh, there's another one here, too, I wanted to go to before the break here, and that is... Yeah, this one here. This is really interesting too. Reign of Terror, Egypt to track down a uh, crackdown on fake weather reports. So what they're saying here in this is that uh, 
You, if, unless you're a meteorologist, you cannot talk about the weather, you can't Facebook about it, you can't do anything on YouTube about it, you can't report about the uh, Grand Solar Minimum, you can't do anything. Weather reports have occasionally become a, uh, a political thing here. So now they're just outlawing it. You go to jail. Uh, they set up a hotline for citizens to report incidents of fake news in the media. <laughs> The country has experienced some unusual extreme weather in recent weeks, including heavy rainfall, fierce sandstorms. Of course, they had snow, too, in there. So, uh, pretty interesting, folks. They're cracking down. No more fake weather news. No more talking about the Grand Solar Minimum down there. I got another segment come up, folks. Stick around. I'll be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TF and you'll find market insights under trading newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! No matter where you're listening to TFNN programming, you can always access your favorite shows on demand through TFNN.com. TFNN airs live programming every market day from 8 a.m. till 6 p.m. Eastern, and you can view each program by accessing Tiger TV through our homepage. We even have an easy link for all mobile devices, including iPhones, iPads, and Android devices, located in the top right-hand corner of the TFNN homepage. You can use your smartphone to view Tiger TV, but if you don't have a connection that can keep up with streaming live video, then you can simply Simply visit TFNN.MOBI in the browser of your smartphone for live streaming audio of all our programs. The mission of TFNN is to educate our audience directly and interactively through our interactive website and call-in talk shows. TFNN is able to teach all levels of investors the technical skills needed to trade in today's marketplace. In order to get the best information possible, TFNN has assembled the most respected financial minds in the country to provide the most current news and comprehensive advice available. TFNN.com. Educating Investors. Welcome back to the show, folks. Uh, Paige wasn't here today, but she's going to be back next week. Uh, she, I think her son has a little uh, operation, and it's taking place this morning. And, of course, she wants to be by his side, and that's natural. So we've been talking a lot about the sun and uh, the grand solar minimum coming, and I always uh, encourage you to do some kind of preparation, maybe three months' worth of food, maybe a little bit longer, just so you have that cushion. You're not going to be uh, uh, one of those people in dire straits. You can't get too much because the laws are such that if there is a food shortage and you have lots of food, the government's going to come and take it. So the best thing to do is not tell anybody about it, put it someplace where nobody can find it, and you have easy access to it, and then maybe you'll be good to go. But uh, I think uh, government's cracking down on some of this uh, 
news, uh, what they call fake news, is uh, about the weather and things like that. Of course, we've been going back and forth for the last couple of decades about the global warming thing, uh, not global warming anymore. Now it's uh, weather's changing, but they're still really talking about everything melting up north and down south, and we're going to be baking right in the middle, and I don't think that's going to happen. So I do recommend that... Uh, you uh, prepare. Now, there's another incident that is happening around the world, which, uh, you know, there's lots of places going offline as far as food concerned, and one of the biggest is North uh, Korea. So I just want to put that out there, that this change of attitude in North Korea has everything to do with the food. Those people are starving. There was, uh, this year, been lots and lots of reports about 50,000 people dying, the troops not being fed. They are in dire straits. So what better way to get the world's attention to try to open some kind of trade so these people can get food by threatening the world for six, seven, eight months or a year? and then saying, hey, I'm willing to step down, all we do, let's negotiate, I'll get rid of these weapons, and all he's asking for is food, probably. And that's my opinion. It's the opinion of a couple of other people who uh, also are uh, talking about this. David Devine comes to mind in ADAPT 2030. He had talked about this uh, last week, and I think he's right on on this. This is why he's coming to the table, because his people are starving. And uh, people do desperate things when food is gone. Just imagine the grocery stores are empty. No trucks are flowing. What are you going to do? And I think this will happen. We're very short on food in this country. Everything's produced every place else, and it has to come miles and miles away. So my recommendation right now is not only get some canned goods and get some food that you can prepare easily without electricity, uh, hoard a little bit, prepare yourself, get yourself a weapon so you can uh, at least defend yourself, uh, maybe get some skills, come to jujitsu or take some boxing lessons or something, take some uh, quarter staff lessons. It's important that you take care of yourself and your family. It's important that you have enough food because when it runs out, we don't know what's going to happen. It's going to be, who knows? I mean, I've n we've never faced this. So, you know, it's, uh, I think this will happen. I think this uh, coming winter, I think the winter will be sooner than we expected. I think uh, right now we see the uh, springtime being kind of delayed. Heck, it's uh, in the 70s here in May, and generally around the 1st of May, we're already mid-80s. And then June comes the 90s. And this is a general pattern here. So our pattern has switched here. It's wonderful. We love it. It's cool. But things are changing. So uh, that's my advice. So, uh, you know, <clears throat> you can come back to me, uh, Nico, at tfnn.com with any suggestions or anything like that. If you're on board, uh, if you want me to go over this, I think we're going to have David Devine uh, in the next couple of weeks again going over some more of these materials. But definitely hook yourself up with David Devine at ADAPT 2030 on YouTube. Very, very great site. He has uh, new stuff coming every week. And also the suspiciousobserver.org. Really important, Ben Davidson and the clan there looking out at looking at the sun and uh, really giving us a really good information. And from there, you can go from there and dig as deep as you want to. Thanks for sticking around, folks. Paige will be back next week. I really appreciate you uh, watching this, and uh, have a great weekend. Bye-bye. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com.
You're watching Tiger TV.